Welcome to Young Money with Tracy Bissett, the advice show for young millionaires in the making. It's time for some million dollars straight talk with Tracy, president and chief financial fitness trainer at Bissett Financial Fitness. Each week, Tracy's going to tell you what you need to know now at the beginning of your earning curve. Basic and advanced financial concepts made clear, healthy money habits and the missteps to avoid, and all the stuff that you can do to set yourself up for a future of fantastic financial freedom. Ready to lace up and start this week's financial fitness training? Let's do it, Tracy. Welcome to the Young Money Podcast. I'm really excited today. We've got such a wonderful guest, Jeet Banerjee. Welcome, Jeet. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're very happy to have you. So to give you listeners just a little bit of background on Jeet, he's a 25-year-old serial entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, and digital marketing consultant. Jeet began his entrepreneurial journey at the age of just 17, and since then has launched over 10 plus successful businesses. In addition to this, he has sold two companies for a profit and helps other entrepreneurs jumpstart their business dreams. So welcome again, Jeet. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for the warm welcome. Oh, much appreciated, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. I think it'd be fantastic if you could start by telling the listeners what you do today. Yeah, absolutely. So today I'm a serial entrepreneur. So what that pretty much means is that I run multiple businesses and entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, There's two companies primarily I'm focused on today. Uh, The first company is a health and supplements and wellness company. And the second one is an online academy that I've launched that basically teaches uh, other people who want to become an online business owner and entrepreneur how to start their own businesses. Comes with seven different uh, courses that they can take to start various online businesses, and it's like a full scale academy. So that's kind of what I do on the business side. And in addition to that, I do a lot of uh, public speaking. Um, so going to conferences, events, schools, colleges, universities, things of that nature, sharing my story and the messages and experiences that I've gained. And I do a little bit of a uh, one-on-one like coaching and digital marketing consulting and things like that also with business owners. So it's kind of where I'm at today. It sounds like you're quite a busy guy. So what do you do for fun? Yeah, absolutely. So some of my hobbies include, um, I'm a big fan of sports. So watching them, playing it, um, Love to kind of go to the gym, work out, things of that nature. Uh, like to play video games as well. And pretty much any other free time I get, I'm spending it with friends, family, and uh, the people that matter to me. Oh, sounds great. Now, you've had achieved quite a lot of success in your at your young age. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, absolutely. For me, I think the biggest thing that I really attribute it to was just like perseverance. Um, because there were many times where I was kind of knocked down, kicked back, and faced failure and dealt with obstacles and challenges. But I never let those obstacles or challenges kind of uh, define me or um, be the end of my road. I always kind of looked at the entire process as a journey. And I took each of those um, hits and knockdowns as a learning lesson. And to me, it was always like, okay, I got knocked down. What can I learn better from this? And how can I come back at it the second time around a lot better, a lot faster, a lot more knowledgeable? And so I think that's the only thing that's really uh, separated me from anyone else is that I've just been um, unwilling to give up. And no matter what happens, I kind of tough it out, brush my shoulders off, get back up and keep going. And I think that's the key with business and entrepreneurship is that uh, many people don't realize that you can fail thousands of times. Like people like Thomas Edison failed hundreds of times, but they were right once or they were, then that's what defines their success today. And it's, people aren't going to remember your failures as long as you keep going and you achieve success. That's what you're going to be remembered for. So yeah, that's pretty much what I attribute it to. I think that's fantastic. And I think it also speaks to a lot about your your mental headspace, because it's that um, resilience and that perseverance and just saying to yourself, you know, let's give it another shot. We'll tweak it this way. We'll do it this way. And and so that's really led you to your success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100 percent. Now, when you think about um, big turning points or revelations in your life from a financial perspective, what comes to mind? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think one of the biggest things I kind of learned like early on was um, uh, so as I kind of had a little bit of success, sold my first company, stuff like that, had like good financial situation for someone who's maybe like 19 years old and had money flowing in and things like that. I really had to learn 
uh, one of the biggest revelations I had was really learning what to do with my money. And one of the biggest things that I really learned was about um, kind of like what the wealthy people do versus the non-wealthy people, what they kind of do with their money. <laughs> and I kind of understood, I got this understood this whole concept of like assets and liabilities. So I kind of understood why wealthy people, they would always invest in assets. So things um, like stocks or things that can generate a return or educational courses, material, real estate, things that kind of um, was an asset, something that where they invest once, they're going to be able to exponentially grow their money with it. And then the second type that I learned, which was like the poor thing to do with your money, was to invest in liabilities. So that may be things like dinners or buying a car or fancy shoes and clothes and things of that nature. And I think that was one of the biggest things that uh, I learned at that age of 19 that like really defined me from that point forward because you make some money, you have some success. And at that point, it becomes very easy to invest in a bunch of liabilities and see all your money just kind of disintegrate. So I thought that was uh, one of the biggest uh, revelations that I had. And did you come to those revelations on your own or did you have someone who was helping guide you, someone you maybe learned from? Um, yeah, so I kind of came to those revelations um, more so myself. And um, and the reason being that, like, you know, like my parents' advice at the time was like, oh, save, 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 put all this money in a ch- savings account and save it. And I kind of did that for a little while. And then I was like, hey, this, this stinks. Like, I put all this money in here and I got <laughs> like $10 after a year. Like, that's terrible. And so that's when I just kind of started to like um, kind of understand, you know, because I always I, I started doing some research and I wanted to know like how to grow your money, like how if you have some money sitting there, what can you do to grow it? And from there, I started educating myself and learning about like stocks and other types of investment opportunities and just kind of jumping in hands on and losing a lot of money through the process, uh, of course, making bad decisions, making wrong missteps. But the whole experience and just having that general concept that take your extra money that you don't need and invest it versus just put in a savings account or spend it on liabilities, I think was the key. I think that's really great. And uh, not a lot of young people necessarily take those steps that you did to really focus in on how can I do this better? How can I make this work for me and get me farther in the long run? So I think that's fantastic. Now, you mentioned your parents. Uh, Were they entrepreneurs as well? Yeah, so my so my mom's always been like kind of like a stay at home mom, take care of everything around the house and the kids. And then my dad initially he started off like working, kind of like a nine to five job. And then I want to say around like maybe nineteen ninety nine or two thousand, he ended up like starting his own business. It was kind of like a side business initially while he was working his nine to five. And then after maybe three to four years of growing that, he kind of just jumped in full time. And so far, uh, since then, he's been like a, a business owner and entrepreneur. So yeah. So he must have been a big inspiration for you when you were thinking of all the different businesses you would would enter into. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It was just great to have uh, like my father who started a business and stuff like that to be able to like kind of relate to me and my concerns when I got started. So it was, uh, even though we were like in completely different spaces and industries and stuff of that nature, it was just great to have kind of uh, someone who's been through the ropes of doing it to kind of be there to advise me and to kind of let me know that everything's going to be okay and that it's challenging, and a lot of lessons he could teach and bring to the table from his wisdom. I think that's great, and um, as you and I had mentioned, uh, I talked about before, I really like one of the blogs that you wrote about the eight things to do before you launch a side business, and Mm -hmm. I envision that you picked up some of those things on your journey through your multiple businesses, as well as probably watching your dad when he started his business on the side while he was still doing his nine-to-five. So I'd love it if you can walk us through those um, tips and steps on how to get ready to, to launch a side business. On the show, we talk regularly about side hustles and how you can definitely increase your income if it's something you're motivated to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like one of the biggest things that I realized was as, as I kind of started achieving success and stuff like that, I got a lot of people that were asking me questions like, oh, I want to quit my nine to five or I want to quit college and I want to start my own business. And one of the biggest things that I kind of realized about a side business, because when I first got started out, it wasn't like my parents were like, oh, you have a free pass. You don't have to go to college or do your education <laughs> anymore. Just start a business. So I was kind of in the side hustle business space myself. So I was going to college as a full time student, taking like 16 units a, a semester while working on my business when I was like my freshman, sophomore uh, years of college. So uh, one of the biggest things that I learned from that experience was that like one of the biggest tips that I have for people when they want to start a side business, number one, you got to be very committed, right? If you don't have the mental uh, mindset or the mind state to be committed and to do this, it's probably going to fail because especially when you've got something that you're already doing full time, this is going to, you're going to have to use all, all your extra hours, the hours that you might be resting and unwinding or relaxing or having fun mm-hmm. to now work on your side business. You really have to be committed and locked in on that goal. 
Um, and the next thing that I really did, especially when I was in like college and stuff, was like I planned out my schedule and I would like strategize uh, how I'm going to manage both things. And I think that's key. And what I would do is like I knew that between the hours of nine to five was when I really had to focus on my business. So I try to take classes like at six in the morning or after hours, like 7 p.m. classes, 6.30 p.m. classes. And I really try to work my schedule around that where it was like, okay, during the day I can focus on the business in the morning and night times I'm going to focus on college. Do you need a lot of sleep? Uh, yeah, you do lose a lot of sleep and that's <laughs> just part of the process. It's, it's tough, but yeah, 100%. Are you the kind of person who functions well on a, just a few hours sleep or do you generally need your sleep? Um, generally, I do need my sleep. But um, I just kind of like got used to it and stuff because I'm not big on caffeine. So I would never drink coffee or like energy shots or anything like that. So I would really be dependent on like my natural energy to keep me going through the day. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I'll I'll let you get back to the tips. I was just curious because I know I need a lot of sleep. And so the schedule is sounding pretty hectic that you laid out for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think it's just like really figuring out like what works for people. Like sometimes like you know, like, like what I would have advised if I was in college and I had the option, like I may have like, instead of being a full-time student, be a part-time student and a part-time and like run my business part-time, that probably would have helped me get the sleep I need and maybe fit some other important things in. But, um, yeah, in addition to that, like other things that people can uh, do is, um, kind of like assessing your finances. So really breaking down to the core, like how much money do I need to survive on a month to month basis? And like, for example, when I was in college, that number was very low for me. I still had my, my parents were supporting me. They had a, given me house, food, all that stuff. So I probably didn't need more than like $500 a month to like really survive. And even that was a stretch but versus great. like when my father in like 1999, when he decides he's going to start a side business, uh, he can't just quit right off the bat because now he's got kids and a wife and all these things he's got to support. So for him, that number was a lot higher. And I think it's something that's really important to consider because that's how you can kind of um, figure out kind of like a short-term and long-term plan. Short-term, you probably can't quit if you need a couple thousand dollars a month because that's hard to get right off the bat with a business. And long-term, um, you want to figure out, okay, if I get my business to X amount of dollars per month in profit, I can quit and go full-time because now I can support everything that needs to be supported. So that's kind of another uh, tip that I give people. Um, another big one is like not to be in a rush. So I'm a big, I'm a big person that's like all about uh, taking action. But when I kind of talk about not taking, uh, or not being in rush is when it's pertaining to your business itself. So if you're running a business for 20 hours a week and you're comparing yourself to the guy running his business for 50 hours a week or 40 hours a week, they're naturally going to grow at a faster pace than you. They may be able to hire employees faster. They may be able to make more revenue, stuff like that. And the biggest thing is don't be in a rush to do all that because you've got to go at your own pace. Yeah. there's nothing wrong with your own pace and the route that you take and all that stuff, but you just have to really, um, it's because when you grow a business, it's directly proportional to the amount of time that you put into it. So I think as you go in with that mindset, realizing that I'm putting in less time, so my growth is going to be slower than X, Y, Z competitor and you're okay with it and understanding of it. I think that's a key. Yeah. I would uh, say, uh, even in the workforce, when uh, young people after they graduate college or university, they get in, they want to progress really quickly. Um, but just setting expectations realistically and certainly for new business owners or people who want to get started, I, I love how you reinforced, like, don't compare yourself to somebody who's doing double or triple the hours that you're doing and, and have those reasonable expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Um, I think that's extremely, extremely important. And probably like one of the biggest last tips that I would share with people when it comes to like starting a business and doing all that is really about outsourcing your weaknesses. So when I kind of got started um, and went through the process of being an entrepreneur, you pretty quickly figure out the things that you're really good at, the things that you love to do. And then on the opposite spectrum, you think, find out the things that you're weak at or the things that you just don't like to do. And for example, for me, that was like accounting and finances. Like I absolutely hated it. I wasn't <laughs> good at it and it was just terrible for me to do. And I quickly realized, okay, one of the first things that I need to do is I need to hire like a tax guy or a CPA to kind of take over this stuff when I have the capability to do so. And especially when you're kind of like starting a side business and you've got a busy day going, you really don't want to focus on the little things that don't need your attention. So you really want to really um, focus on the things that you're really good at and start outsourcing your weaknesses. And I think that's a big tip that I can uh, also expand and share with a lot of people because I think that can help them greatly. Absolutely. And of all the businesses that you have, which was your favorite or favorites? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think my favorite business has to be uh, StatFuse, and that was kind of like a uh, web application that helped high school students get into college. And I think that one was my favorite because it was the toughest business and the most challenging business that I've ever had to create. And just being able to go through the process and having so many times where I wanted to give up but I refused to, and just being able to see that company like flourish and grow and get to a point where it was at a quarter of a million users and then have a company come out to us and reach out to us about acquiring it. Um, just going through that entire journey over those four to five years that I was a part of it, or four years that I was a part of it, was just an incredible experience, and I don't think there was anything more challenging or as powerful as that company. So that's my favorite up to date. Oh, that's cool, and certainly would have helped a lot of people uh, with that, uh, that app to do that because it's so tough. Now, when you think about people who inspire you when it comes to financial matters, who would you say that is? Could be somebody in your life, could be someone famous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of my biggest inspirations was uh, Warren Buffett because I kind of, um, when I kind of got, got to the point at around 1920 where I was like, okay, I need to invest my money and stuff like that. One of the first things that I really looked at coming towards financial stuff was looking at stocks. And so I tried, I read, read all these books, took all these courses, watched all these videos, trying to understand and learn stocks. And for whatever reason, at the end of it all, I was like, I still don't understand what I should and shouldn't invest in. And all these numbers and this jumble of math doesn't really make too much sense to me. And I tried to apply it there and I was losing money, losing money, losing money. And then I came across like this one article from Warren Buffett and he had this one quote and he's just like, and I think someone asked him like, oh, what is it that you do when you invest? And he said, I just invest in things that I know. And if I use it and I like it, I invest in it. And that really related to me because I was like, man, all this time I've been investing in like this biotech farm company or these random companies that I had no clue what they did or anything. But just because the charts look good, I put money into it and I lost money. Um, I think that was one of the biggest like pieces of advice that really helped turn my investment mindset around. And I just started investing in the companies and the products that I would use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I saw myself getting a return. I saw myself understanding the news that would be released. And so uh, I think Warren Buffett has definitely been very, very influential because once I read that, I just started digging deeper and deeper into understanding how he built his wealth. And uh, that's definitely been very inspiring for me. Excellent. And you shared some great tips with people on how they can get into a side hustle. Are there any other words of wisdom you would have just in terms of general entrepreneurship um, to help our, our young listeners out there? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest advice that I can give people is that uh, take action and take massive action right now. And um, one of the biggest things that I tell people is that I was always very, very impatient growing up as a child, all that stuff. And my impatience paid off for the first time when I decided to be an entrepreneur because <laughs> I had this great idea and I was like, oh, why wait? Why not just do it now? And I had so many people tell me like, oh, you're too young. You should wait. And are you not ready yet? Go to college first, get your degree, then do it. And all those like words in my head. And I was just so impatient that I was like, I don't care. Like I want to figure out right now if this works or not. And if it doesn't work, then I'll know right now. And I think that's my biggest uh, advice for other young people that want to be entrepreneurs is that there's never going to be a perfect time. Life never gets easier. You're always going to have time issues or money issues or experience issues or big things happening in your life. So just start right now if you're really serious about it. Just take massive action and just do it. Well, I think that's perfect. And certainly if you wait too long, someone else may move ahead with your idea or the market just changes completely and so it wouldn't be viable any longer. Yep, exactly. Well, that's fantastic. So, G, thanks so much for joining us today. I'd love it if you can tell the listeners what you're working on next and where they can go to learn more about you. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to like kind of my next projects and stuff like that, so um, I'm working on the company that I mentioned, like the online academy called the Income Incubator. And I really foresee myself kind of like diving really deep into that company and being able to take it to the next level. Like I really want to expand it, offer more courses and online material. And I just want to be kind of like the go-to source for helping other people start their own entrepreneurial dreams and starting their own online businesses and stuff like that. So I think it's definitely all about expanding that company. And in terms of getting in touch with me and learning more about me, people can uh, go to my personal website, which is jeetbanerjee.com, spelled J-E-E-T-B-A-N-E-R-J-E-E.com. And on my personal website, I've got my blogs, my social media, my emails, and all my projects. So people can learn about me or get in touch with me there. Well, thank you so much. So I, I know that I've certainly taken a, a lot away with me today, and I know the listeners well as well. I really appreciate your success tip in terms of that perseverance and really thinking of things like a journey and 
every time he got knocked down, kind of revisiting that, moving forward and becoming extremely successful. Um, I loved your perspective on uh, the financial things and, and what you learned and certainly taking action yourself to do that um, digging into assets and liabilities and figuring out what wealthy people do and then what not to kind of put your money into. And in terms of people getting into side hustles, we talk a lot about it on Young Money because people are always looking for ways to supplement their income so they can achieve their dreams. But your tips in terms of being committed, really being realistic and planning your schedule, assessing your finances so you know what you can afford and, and what not, not to be in too much of a rush, and then certainly outsourcing everything um, of areas of weakness. So I think those will serve our listeners very well as they implement all of those tips moving into a side hustle. So thanks again for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to uh, share with your audience. Great. So there you have it, listeners. That was Jeet Banerjee, a 25-year-old serial entrepreneur who I know you're going to learn a lot from after listening to this interview. So until next time, take good care and stay financially fit. Hey, thanks for tuning in. To all you millionaires in the making out there, if you love this podcast, please subscribe on iTunes to keep your financial fitness training going. Oh, and leave us a review. And be sure to visit Visit 2 S's, 2 T's, financialfitness.com to take your free financial fitness assessment. Find out how financially fit you really are. See you next week, young millionaires-to-be.